All right, so I thought I'd share something just because it made my life a little easier here when I was uh, taking some dimensions on the car. Um, on the 67 Mustang, there's uh, the, the two rear frame rails. If you're, if you're replacing one or both, you have to maintain the right dimension side to side and obviously the, the placement front to rear. The, the placement's a little easier because there's, a, there's the, the portion that goes over the wheel well area under the transition pan kind of aligns that for you. You don't have a whole lot of choice on how much movement you get there, but you do have movement side to side. You could have the out, the back end could be tweaked out or the front end could be tweaked out or tweaked in. So you could get some, some skewed numbers if you're not careful. So as a result, you have to be able to measure across some dimensions. There's one that's 43 inches, another one's like I think 37 and uh, 3 eighths. Um, so, or 9 sixteenths, whatever. So um, to do that, I would need a body tram or something like that. Um, I priced some of those and you know, it's, pretty expensive. I mean, it's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars for, for a decent tram set that's actually outfitted for this. Because uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're built very nice. They're, they're really nice piece of equipment, but unless you're a body guy and you're doing this all the time, it's just not worth the investment, I don't think. Uh, so in this instance, I tried to find a way around it. Uh, so I started just kind of wandering around Lowe's looking at things that I could, could retrofit. And so this came up that basically, this is a piece of conduit that you're going to run electrical wiring in. And uh, this, you know, they use these in buildings more in, in like, you know, facilities, not necessarily houses as much. But this is the stuff you see in a, in, a, in, a, in a rough, thin building. You'll have these things going down the post and everything. And they'll carry the wire to the, to the you know, conduit style boxes that have all of your light switches and stuff in them. But these are nice because they come in 10 foot pieces and you can join them. You can just, you can take these little connectors um, that have, it's like a pot metal material. So it's not super strong, but it's, but it's definitely stronger for what it's doing. Uh, it's got two set screws in it, and in the middle, there's a little, uh, little, like seam or or, or you know, lip inside there, which makes it to where this thing will only go on so far. So if I put it on a tube, it's only going to go on there, and it's going to it's going to pop against the end, and then it's you know it's not going to go on any further. And then so once you put it on there, you just tighten it down, and then you join another one, and you know keep running your your, your wiring. But in this instance, I need one of these how it is just so I don't have to worry about coming off the end and that's going to be my fixed point for my for my uh, gauge so I take this one slide it on and then just run the screw in until it's tight and now this thing isn't moving so that locks me down but then I need one that's that's able to be moved so all you do is take a drill bit that's the same size as the conduit and just punch that out just you, you can drill through this stuff so easy it's, it's really soft so you drill through that and now this becomes uh, you know, a, a movable dimension that you, you can set it on whatever you want. Um, and so in order to lock it down, rather than fighting with a screwdriver and possibly moving something around, um, I just picked up these little thumb screws that you can get for, you know, you get a bag of four, four to six of them or something for, you know, a dollar or something at, at the store as well. And, uh, and I'm trying to remember what the thread is on those. I, I want to say this is like a, I was thinking 1032, but I don't think it is. I think it's probably like a 1020 or something thread. But anyway, you'll see the thumb screws. They only come in certain sizes, and they jump pretty big size-wise. But really, all you would need to do is buy one of these, pull the screw out, and just push it up against some stuff and just see which one lines up with it as far as the threading is concerned. Um, but I think it's I think it's like a 1020. Um, so the nice part about this setup is that you can... Uh, it's totally adjustable. If I needed a 10 foot piece, I could use a 10 foot piece, but I really can't maneuver a 10 foot piece in my garage without smacking into stuff or, or risking banging around the pins. So I, that's why I'm going with the shorter one, just because I can join it if I need to, or I can you know, just use it, use it short. Um, so all you have to do on this is you get these, you, you can get threaded rods or you know, all thread. That's the same uh, thread as these uh, pin, as these uh, screws as well. And again, they're you know a few bucks you know for, for a bag of four or something like that. I think it is. Um, and these come in different lengths. So I can get a six inch, four inch, two inch. I can get whatever size I want. Ideally, you're going to want the shortest one you can for your application because there's less chance of, of any deflection if you accidentally bump it too hard against something as you're trying to as you're trying to measure it. Um, so the shorter the better. Um, I also added just so you can kind of see it's got these little these little caps on the end here. Um, and these are just little caps came in a bag there as well. Uh, they're in like one of those like special fasteners and whatever drawers there at the store. And I did that just because if I have a hole that's about eighth of an inch in diameter, it's got a little bit of a, of a point on the end of it and I can just kind of lay it down in there and, it, and it'll, you know, kind of self-align. So it makes it a little, you know, pretty easy. Um, now, if you have a dimension, like if you say you have a hole that's, that's you know, like in my instance, I had a hole that was like almost three quarters of an inch in diameter. One was like three eighths and the other one was like, like uh, 
11 16 or three quarter. This is not going to work, right? You're going to stick it in the hole and it's just going to wobble around. And it's not going to, you're never going to know if you're centered because again, you have to be looking at it from the end, Well, then you can't see what's happening on the other end. So now you have to go to that end and meanwhile, you might have moved this. So, uh, so that's, you know, obviously problematic. Um, so what I was able to figure out was you just grab a, like a saltwater bobber, bob you can buy in the Walmart, stuff like that. There's the kind of with a slit in it. So it's kind of like a collet effect. And these typically are used obviously for fishing but they take the fishing line, they lay it down through the groove, and then they slide the, slide the pin in to hold the fishing line, and now it's, you know, it's, it's sitting there on the string. So you take the pin out, and then you can take this guy, take this little you know, rubber thing off there, and stick it on the end, and just push it till maybe it's flush or something on the end, and now you have a tapered uh, alignment you know, method. So you can now take it, if you're on a big hole, I can put it in there, and it kind of it self-centers as, as, as it drops down into the hole. Um, so, you know, I can just slide it straight down into the hole and now I know, I know I'm centered on that hole and I can do the same thing on this end if I want. Um, and it's variable, you can kind of pick whatever size you want. The big thing you want to make sure is that when you're taking a dimension, this, this tube needs to be parallel to whatever you're doing. I mean, you shouldn't be this deep on one and only out here on the other because obviously you're, you know, you're skewed, you're starting to throw like, you know, you're starting to throw geometry and, and trig in there at that point, you know, you're, you're getting some dimensions that are all over the place. So you want to make sure you're, you're parallel to whatever you're measuring. Uh, the other thing you want to do is um, to adjust this now, like I said, you know, these thumb screw, screws are nice. So you take the, take the uh, gauge, you just lay it down on whatever you want that dimension to be. You just lay a tape measure down, say you're, you know, I'm starting here on 36 inches and I want to take over to, you know, say, say six on this end. So I want a 30 inch dimension, right? So just for, for you know, for ex example's sake. I would lay that in where I want it, come over to this end, just kind of lay it down where, where, I, where I need that one to be. And then I'm just gonna lightly tighten down, you know, just tighten down the, the thumb screw by hand. And so now if it's laying down, like you're, presumably you're doing this on, on like a concrete slab or wherever you are outside, as it's laying down, this tip is touching the ground and the, you know, this uh, connector is touching the ground. So everything's sitting at the same angle. It's really, I mean, it's pretty, you know, that part just takes a lot of variation out of it. And then once you have, the you know, thumb screw tightened down, it's not going to go anywhere. Now this thing will stay there. Um, kind of like I mentioned a little earlier, you obviously want the shortest one you can, because the longer this thing is, the more chance there is of, of, of getting a load put on it and, and moving it. But the whole point with the tram is you don't want to be knocking it on there tight. You're just, you're just trying to come, you're basically taking a dimension off of one thing and going, yep, that's what it is. And then you, you just kind of go back and forth with it. So you're just going to check it. So like in this instance, I would just take it, go underneath the car, check the dimension, say, yep, okay, it looks where it's supposed to be, make the adjustments on the vehicle that I have to do, then come back out, put the tram back on the, on the uh, tape measure just to make sure, hey, I didn't bang it, I didn't bend it, I didn't do anything. It's, it, was, it was correct when I started, it was correct when I did, it was correct when I came back. So um, just kind of like bookending your measurements. Um, so anyway, I just figured I'd throw that out there. I mean, it's cheap. I think I spent 20 bucks or something total on everything. Um, and it, it works, you know, really well for what, what I'm doing. Um, when you start joining them together, you're, you're going to, I mean, you can tighten it down to where it's not movable, but the longer this rod is, the more chance there is that it might bow or something like that. That's why I don't know that I would do it on like a 12 foot dimension. I, I think that's kind of asking for trouble. Um, but for s shorter stuff, it, it works pretty well. Um, you know, off the four or five feet probably shouldn't be a, or any real problem. Um, so anyway, just thought I'd throw it out there. If anybody finds it useful, you know, I don't know, hopefully it helps. Thanks.